Greetings, greetings, my fellow YouTube nurses. All right, picture this, you just get on the clock, you drink a little cup of coffee, trying to energize and wake up, and then boom, you hear on the intercom, fresh STEMI. ST elevation, myocardial infarction, the patient just had a heart attack. So you get report within like five minutes, patient was at home, falls on his head, gets unresponsive, he goes into V-fib, they shock him twice, go back to CPR, they shock him again, and all of a sudden he comes in, sinus brady, they bolus him with a liter of fluid, and guess who gets him rolling in the gurney? I do. So let me just tell you, first off, I have great manager, great supervisor, great clinical coordinator, great nursing staff, they're very knowledgeable, and by the way, the intensivist is really nice, and down to earth, and he was just kind of like, let's do this. So I was nervous, scared, a little anxious, but we did it together as a team. Shout out to everyone there helping me. And uh, it was extreme. So anyway, patient comes in in a gurney, big boy. I'm not going against hip. I'm not explaining who the patient is, but let's get down to the nitty gritty for anybody who wants to know what happened. So big boy comes in, right with that point, we intubated, or he was already intubated, but we put a central line, the doctor explained it how to do it properly, and I got the A line going, with CVP set up, but all the drips were ready to roll out. Right when he gets in there, we do all that, and once it was all done, you follow protocol. When someone has a heart attack, or they go to VV, you shock them, anything with their heart situation or heart problem, you have to do a, a protocol, which is you do the cooling blankets. You got to keep that patient cold between 89.9 and 92 degrees. You want to decrease that. Our normal temperature for us is 98, 97, 99 for some others, but you want to keep it cool. Why do you want to cool a patient down after they have a heart situation or heart problem? because now you don't want that heart to compensate and work harder than it should to perfuse uh, blood to the liver, to the kidneys. You don't want to perfuse all the way down the pancreas, to your extremities, who cares? Right now we want that blood to shunt only to the heart and only to the brain. So when you cool that patient, you have to make sure you get it down to grease. So it was taking a while. And at that point, when I start making the patient cooler with the cool blankets, I put ice on his neck, ice on the head, ice in the, in the groin, ice all over the place in bags just to cool him down. And at this point, he starts shivering. So man, I'm on the edge of my seat. Patient can't shiver, so I had to increase whatever he had. Propofol, then we had Versed, and uh, he had pain medication. So he was sedated, he was on paralytics, and at that point, that's when I was, you know, asking my team what we should all do next for the patient. And so he stopped shivering. So when someone starts shivering, they start getting warm. Their body starts getting, it's just a body mechanism to warm up. So I had to increase that again. And um, it, was, it was a little nerve wracking, but what happens when you have sedatives, paralytics, and pain medication? You're going to go in a hypovolemic kind of state. So his blood pressure started dropping at that point. So I was like, really? But the patient was stable. At that point, I started a levo, brought his pressure back up. And guess what happens when you're only shutting blood just to your heart and your brain at that point when they're cold? They don't have enough blood going to the kidneys and the pancreas and liver. So the pancreas is not really secreting enough uh, blood to perfuse that organ. So if it's not secreting enough blood for the organ to function, then the insulin you have to check every hour. So he was on insulin drip every hour. So he was on like six, seven titrating drips. I was on, it, on the patient. And I was monitoring vital signs every 15 minutes. He was stable at by four or five in the morning. Patients been went down to 90 degrees. Blood pressure was great. CVP was great. Map was good. And at that point, he was ready to roll out. And guess what time it was? Six o'clock. It was fast and it flew by quick. The team I worked with was amazing. I want to share this experience with you guys and the fellow YouTube nurses. Don't forget to drop questions. Drop any type of uh, questions you have on Twitter, on here. Follow me on Instagram, Nurse Mendoza 7. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me on uh, Twitter. I said it like four times, but who cares? Anyway, guys, my fellow YouTube nurses, don't forget to subscribe, like, share this video. And any questions, let me know, y'all. My fellow YouTube nurses, peace.